Lonely Oz, I'm going to discuss a few things with you that you will definitely want to hear about. If you haven't heard about this one already, Kim Clement prophesied Trump's presidency in 2007, and I'm going to play that clip for you. And we're going to move on after that and discuss some more things, like I said, that you're definitely going to want to hear about. But the author of this article wrote that he has prayed for, voted for, and supported Mr. Trump from that day forward, yet his confidence remains in God, not humans. And that's what we need to do. We need to keep our focus on God, rely on God, not on a person. There's no doubt in my mind that everything that happens happens for a reason. God is always in control. So the fact that Donald Trump won the presidency is definitely what God had wanted or it wouldn't have happened. Now, do keep in mind, a lot can happen in between now and the date that he is officially sworn in. And so we need to remain prayerful and stick close to God and stay in the faith. And remember, like I said, put your faith in God, not in a person. I do see a lot of hatred on the internet. If anyone even says anything about Donald Trump that could be remotely negative, people are lashing out and getting very angry and hateful. And my friends, we ought not to do this. We should always kind of sit back and look at everything with an open mind. And again, consider the days and the times and the hours in which we are living and not lash out at other people. Everyone is entitled to their opinions, their thoughts, their feelings, Uh, Different people have things laid on their heart. Like right now, there's a heaviness laid on many people's hearts. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that feel like something is going to happen and it's not as it seems. So let's keep an open mind and an open heart so that we can hear God's voice. Let me go ahead and play that clip for you of Kim Clement. And boy, is it amazing. I'm going to go ahead and share that with you now. This that shall take place shall be the most unusual thing, a transfiguration, a going into the marketplace, if you wish, into the news media, where Time Magazine will have no choice but to say what I want them to say. Newsweek, what I want to say. The View, what I want to say. shall become a trumpet, says the Lord. Trump shall become a trumpet. I will raise up the Trump to become a trumpet and Bill Gates to open up the gate of a financial realm for the church, says the Lord. I will not forget 9-11. I will not forget what took place that day. The gatekeeper that watched over New York, who will once again stand and watch over this nation, says the Spirit of God. It shall come to pass that the man that I place in the highest office shall go in whispering my name. But God said when he enters into the office, he will be shouting out by the power of the Spirit, for I shall fill him with my spirit when he goes into office, and there will be a praying man in the highest seat in your land. There will be a praying president, not a religious one, for I will fool the people, says the Lord. I will fool the people. Yes, I will. God says, the one that is chosen shall go in and they shall say, he has hot blood. For the Spirit of God says, yes, he may have hot blood, but he will bring the walls of protection on this country in a greater way. And the economy of this country shall change rapidly, says the Lord of hosts. Listen to the word of the Lord. God says, I will put at your helm for two terms. A president that will pray, but he will not be a praying president when he starts. I will put him in office and then I will baptize him with the Holy Spirit and my power, says the Lord of hosts. Come on! Wow, I don't know about you, but that gave me goosebumps all over. But here's a question that James Bailey, author and owner of Z3 News, put out. Can we trust Trump? 
Now, Mr. Bailey gave me his permission very kindly to use whatever I wanted of his. So I did take a segment out of his podcast and kind of put in what I wanted to use out of that. And so you're going to hear that here in a moment. And there is a clip of Joni Stahl also that is very chilling. And wait till you hear what was told to her by a government worker. You'll hear that in just a moment. But the question here is, can we trust Trump? Is he truly an anti-establishment rogue element? Or is he a Trojan horse playing a scripted role for the New World Order elite? Again, this article and this video is not bashing Donald Trump. It's just posing questions that we should all pray about. Trump won the election with his steady barrage of blunt attacks against a corrupt political system, but is he really any different? In the weeks prior to the election, his attacks were supported by news information released by WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and secretly filmed undercover videos released James O'Keefe of Project Veritas Action, which appear to have shaken the financial elite globalist and disrupted their plans. Or is something else happening? In this 48-minute Z3 News podcast, I share my own discoveries and conclusions. I will provide the link to that. However, I'm not providing the entire 48 minutes. I've only got a few excerpts, including the one of Joni Stahl. Now, Joni Stahl is a author on A Minute Till Midnight, so I will provide the link there as well. And she has a job that is quite interesting, which gives her, or I should say provides her, with inside information from time to time. Then earlier this year, I heard a testimony from Z3 contributing author Joni Stahl, in which she shared an event where she was working at a prestigious club that is often visited by senators and high-level government leaders, and she had an interesting conversation with a Secret Service agent from the White House. And I'm going to play this three-minute clip in which she shares what this man told her about Donald Trump. I will say this. It's a private club. Um, There's many politicians that come in there from the White House. Um, A high-ranking member of uh, administration came in. I won't mention his name. I'll mention it to you offline. I'll tell you who it was. And his Secret Service agent was standing at my desk. Okay? Normally, they always stand at my desk. They're Secret Service agents all the time. Normally, they just talk, surface talk. Well, one day, he just, this guy started talking to me, which was really unusual, and he seemed very open. And I'm going to share with you what he told me. Very shocking, actually, you know. He said, so who do you think is going to be president? And I felt kind of nervous, but I thought, I don't care. I'm not going to fear. And I said, well, you know, the way things are looking right now, I'm probably thinking it's going to be Trump. And he said, let me tell you something right now. He said, Trump has already been chosen to be president. He was chosen two years ago. And I go, really? And I felt like that was some crazy open door because I'm thinking, what is this? You know what I mean? So I thought, okay, I'm going to start asking some questions. He can shut me down anytime he wants. So I thought, here I go. So I said, he goes, and let me tell you why they're going to bring Trump in. You know his immigration policy? You know how he said that when he comes in, he is going to have a mass deportation? I said, yes. He said, they're going to have him in the office because when he, they want him to do a mass deportation because as soon as he does a mass deportation, there's going to be coast to coast civil unrest where they can call in martial law. Now, this guy went on to tell me that he works with Obama constantly, okay, you know, I'm thinking, Lord, this is either this is a view or this is, I don't know. Then he went on to tell me, I said, okay, let me ask you a question. What about this Jade Helm thing? I mean, he goes, well, what do you think it is? I go, I don't know. I go, the only thing that we lowly Americans know is there's some kind of martial law thing that's going to happen. He goes, you're right. There is going to be martial law. I go, really? He goes, absolutely. I go, when? He goes, next year. Well, this year, you know? And I said, really? He goes, that's right. And I go, really? He goes, look, we all know. Let me just put this to you. He said my name. Let me just tell you something, Joan. 
He said, Trump is going to be elected. It was already decided two years ago. And there will be martial law. I go, okay, let me ask you something right now. What about the economic collapse? He goes, there's not going to be an economic collapse. There's going to be an economic catastrophe. And let me tell you something. Nobody has any idea what is coming. Nobody knows. He goes, me personally, he goes, I'm going to finish up what I'm doing with Obama's administration. And I'm going to get it. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to go to Belgium. And it was interesting because he had an English accent. And I thought, you know, I thought you had to be American to be, you know, have PPD, you know, presidential protection duty. So that was interesting to me. Okay, so that clip came from her interview on a minute to midnight dot com. And this is not a prophetic message. It's not a word from God. It's just an encounter, an interesting story. It's just one piece of information to consider. But again, we have to be on guard because we don't know who this man is. He was a Secret Service agent because she routinely encounters Secret Service agents, and she knows these people that come into her club where she works. But she did not personally know this man or his credibility or his track record, so he might be telling the truth, he might know some inside information, or he could be just blowing smoke. We don't know. I'm just putting it out there because it's one more piece of information to consider. If what that man said is true, then they cut a deal with Donald Trump. The shadow government figures, the financial elite, the New World Order crowd, they cut a deal with Donald Trump two years before the election to make him the next president. Then that is a very sinister plot because it tells us that Donald Trump is just playing a scripted role for the purpose of deceiving and betraying the American people to achieve the objectives of the New World Order elite, the same crowd that Obama and Hillary Clinton work for. Now, even though I don't know this Secret Service agent and Joni Stahl didn't know this man personally, but I do know Joni well enough to know that she wouldn't make it up. I believe the encounter actually did happen. So the real unanswered question is, is this Secret Service agent, was he telling the truth? And not too long after that, someone shared with me another piece of information that I found very interesting, which is a recording of the television program The Simpsons, which aired in the year 2000 and shows a scene where a woman becomes president of the United States and she's complaining because her administration inherited a mess from the previous administration which she identifies as President Trump, specifically problems with the economy that she inherited from Donald Trump's presidency. The Simpsons episode foretelling a Donald Trump presidency in which the economy tanks, the country is bankrupted, and a woman becomes president after Trump. But clips of this program foretelling the attacks on 9-11 an outbreak of the Ebola virus, and other major events that have happened foretold in advance by scenes on this program. So whatever, it's another piece of information that's interesting, something to consider, that possibly somebody is pulling the strings behind the scenes here and knows these things before they happen. And the reason I wanted to share that, the reason it caught my attention is because in 2014, God gave me a dream in which I saw the future of the United States. And I specifically, in this dream, I spoke with a woman, and she explained to me that she was going to be leaving, but that she would be coming back. And the interpretation that I have of this dream is that she's coming back in the year 2020. I believe what that was telling me is that she's going to become president in 2020 because I saw President Obama was president at that time that she was speaking to me, but he was going to be handing the power over to her, and then he was going to be departing and leaving the country permanently and leaving her behind to complete the assignment that he had, which was to destroy our country and murder our people. I posted the details of that dream 
on Z3News.com. You can use the search tool to find it. The title is United States Government Planning the Mass Murder of the American People. And in that dream, I did not see anybody in between President Obama and this unrighteous woman who follows him. However, when I saw President Obama departing, I was not shown the dates. So it is possible there could be a gap in between the time that he departs and the time that she returns and becomes president. And that gap could be where President Trump's presidency fits in. The other thing I saw in that dream was the American people had been through a series of very severe problems prior to the time when this woman would be returning. So basically everything in my dream is consistent with what's shown in this Simpsons video, which I find amazing. If it was not for my dream and the fact that I believe that sequence of events, I would have dismissed this video, but it just so happens to fit perfectly. So either it's an amazing coincidence or somebody's given them information, somebody who knows things that are going to happen before they happen. Okay, I want to move on now and consider another aspect of Donald Trump and how he has boldly and aggressively attacked the corruption in Washington, D.C. and the corruption in specific political candidates like Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, FBI Director James Comey, and others. It appears that Trump's candidacy came along at just the right time when the American people were fed up with all the political correctness and the refusal of the establishment Republicans to call out the corruption that was happening right in front of their face. Isn't that something, all of it? The Kim Clement prophecy from several years ago, the uh, Simpsons episode, which I'm getting ready to discuss in more detail with you and what Joni Stahl said. Now, I've actually spoken with Joni Stahl, and she also is a good friend and knows James Bailey, the author on Z3 News and the owner of the podcast, the gentleman you heard talking. He knows her quite well, and so there's no doubt in my mind as to whether or not she was telling the truth, but you know who knows about the man that she talked to, and if he was indeed telling the truth— all I can say is God help us. So that's something right there. And we really, really need to keep our eyes open with everything that is happening and has been happening over the last few years, prophetically speaking. So here on the screen in The Guardian, you can see the article, Simpsons writer says President Trump episode was a warning to the U.S. The writer of Bart to the Future episode aired almost exactly 16 years ago, says idea was consistent with the vision of U.S. going insane. It was intended, according to its creator, as a warning to America, a horrifying and fantastical vision of the future in which the U.S. ludicrously had elected as its president, Donald Trump. A possible future Trump presidency, said the episode's writer Dan Greeney, just seemed like the logical last stop before hitting the bottom. It was pitched because it was consistent with the vision of America going insane. The episode, broadcast almost exactly 16 years ago on March 19th of 2000, saw Bart offered a vision of his future in which he is a beer-swilling bum, while his sister Lisa has become president following Trump's time in office. Now, I'll share with you some of what was said in that clip. James Bailey does play that segment in his podcast, and you can do that on podcast. Unfortunately for me, because it gets uploaded to my YouTube channel, I am unable to really uh, risk sharing that clip from The Simpsons because there's copyright stuff involved, and then you get into a whole bunch of trouble. So you can hear that clip in his podcast if you want, or you can look it up on YouTube, but I'll go ahead and share with you some of what it says right here. As you know, we have inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. Lisa, who describes herself as America's first straight female president, tells her advisors from behind her Oval Office desk, how bad is it? The country is broke. How can it be? The previous regime, she is told, made the mistake of investing in our nation's children. The balanced breakfast program just created a generation of ultra-strong super criminals. 
and midnight basketball just taught them to function without sleep. Bart's vision, he is told, is 30 years into the future, which would mean Trump is hoping to claim the White House either six or 10 years ahead of Greeny's prediction. Depending on whether his fictional counterpart serves one or two terms in the White House. He told The Hollywood Reporter, the important thing is that Lisa comes into the presidency when America is on the ropes, and that is the condition left by the Trump presidency. What we needed was for Lisa to have problems that were beyond her fixing, that everything went as bad as it possibly could, and that's why we had Trump be president before her. The Simpsons, he said, has always kind of embraced the -the over-the-top side of American culture, and Trump is just the fulfillment of that. I also want to mention to you that Joni Stahl and I have spoken, and she has agreed to do an interview with me, and it's going to be uploaded for my radio show and also to my YouTube channel. So that'll be here in the next two weeks. She is going to share uh, what she said here that you heard in this clip as well as some more information. So be looking for that here in the near future. I'm also going to have James Bailey, author and owner of Z3 News, on the show. He has also agreed. And I just got in touch with Pastor Benjamin Faircloth. He has been featured all over the internet, including on Rick Wiles' show, and he has also agreed to an interview. And tonight I'm going to have Douglas Woodward and Anthony Patch on my show, so you'll be hearing that next. That's going to be a good one, trust me. Well, they're all going to be really exciting and really good, but be sure and subscribe to me. Make sure when you subscribe, you check off in the box to get notified when I upload a video. So lots of good stuff coming up. Uh, My latest was Paul McGuire and Troy Anderson, the best-selling authors of The Babylon Code. So if you haven't listened to that yet, make sure you check out my previous video. I also want to add, let's all stay in prayer and stay focused because time is of the essence. I do have one more thing I almost forgot I want to show you if you had not seen it. Breaking Israel News Biblical pillar of cloud protects Israel from ISIS over Golan Heights. It says a startling video, which has been shared over 140,000 times on Facebook, reveals without a doubt the hand of God protecting Israel against her enemies. The video posted on Thursday by Israel News Online shows what appears to be an enormous pillar of cloud, dust, and rain hovering over the dangerous border between Israel and Syria, in the very same area where ISIS militants had attacked IDF forces for the first time four days earlier. Most incredibly, the mysterious cloud ended precisely at the border without entering Israel's Golan Heights region, seeming to afflict the Syrian side while not harming Israel. This strange storm of what appears to be dust Cloud and rain did not cross the border fence into Israel. It sat like a barrier between ISIS and Israel, the Facebook post read. In the video, dozens of amazed IDF soldiers are shown photographing and taping the bizarre weather phenomenon with their phones. With over 5 million views, nearly 60,000 likes, 28,500 comments, and 143,793 shares, The video quickly went viral. Commentators had no doubt of what they were seeing, calling the cloud a miracle and a protective occurrence provided by the Almighty. God protecting his chosen people yet again, wrote Orlando Houston, while Margaret Tilford commented, if they had cell phones back when God parted the Red Sea and led the Israelites, it would have looked like this. Indeed, the biblical parallel is unmistakable. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert after leaving Egypt, the Bible relates that God took the form of a pillar of cloud to lead them. Exodus 13, 21 through 22. And God went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might go by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night departed not from before the people. It is the hand of God the Almighty showing the world He is in control, wrote Magda Botha. Days before the appearance of this strange cloud barrier, 
a cell of four ISIS militants on the Syrian side of the border had fired on an IDF patrol in the Golan, marking the first time that the Islamic State had ever directly attacked Israeli forces. So here we have the first time something like that had ever happened, and then four days later, this strange pillar of cloud phenomenon, just like God did back in the Old Testament. IDF soldiers immediately returned fire, killing all four attackers. Now, keep in mind, there was four attackers, too. And Israeli fighter jets responded by striking targets within Syria. No Israeli soldiers were hurt. So four attackers, four days later, there's this pillar of cloud. Seems pretty obvious to me that God was directly sending a message. I will provide the link, and if you haven't seen it, you can check out this video right here of that cloud. It is amazing. So that's it for today, but I just want to remind everyone, stay close to Jesus, be prayerful, and remember to put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, each and every day, because we are going to need it. God bless you, and thank you so much. taking place in the news each and every day. There's never been more of a concern as there is now about the economy crashing or about martial law. If any event happened, which would be beyond our control, ask yourself, do you have enough food supplies to last you and your family? Unfortunately for most Americans, the answer is no. Please go to foodforliberty.com slash liaz, L-E-A-H-Z, and check out their food supplies. They have some of the best prices and reasonable prices on the market. Check them out today and order yours while there's still time. Again, that's foodforliberty.com slash liaz, L-E-A-H-Z. Waste no more time and get yours today.